object-oriented card games. You may recall that object-oriented programming involves the implementation of classes and the instantiation of those classes as objects. We'll take a look at an example of object-oriented programming using cards and card games. And hopefully we'll understand how object-oriented programming can help our programs be easier to understand and more intuitive. Let's begin by looking at a module called mydeck.py. In this module, you'll see we have a, a class for a deck of cards as well as a class of a card. But these classes are not the first things we see. The first things we see are some global variables. And in these global variables, in which we're using the Python convention of all caps, to represent these variables. So these global variables will retain their values throughout the implementation of the classes below. If we're going to be implementing cards, we want to define the symbols representing each of those cards, that is the suits. And so here, we've set as very intuitively named global variables, club, diamond, heart, spade, we've set to those variables strings, which are a mix of Unicode and ANSI escape sequences that will give us the Unicode characters for club, diamond, heart, and spade in their appropriate colors. So this is basically a string saying, in the case of diamond, saying, start printing in red, print out the Unicode symbol for the diamond, and then stop printing in red. The suits we then define as a tuple, club, diamond, heart, and spade, referring to these global variables above. The values we give as a set tuple of strings, ace, two, three, and so on, up to jack, king, and queen. And then we come to something that may look a little different. This is still a class, but it is inheriting from integer enumeration, which at the top we imported from the module enum. So as the comment says, an enumeration of card ranks such that ranks are coded as readable names. And we'll be able to access both the names themselves and the values that they store. So this class, card rank, is basically a listing of all the possible ranks a card may have and defining an integer value to them. Why would we want to do this? Because we'll want to be looking in the code at names that are more intuitive as to what a playing card rank should be, rather than to a number which may be arbitrary. And we'll see that we can perform operations upon the numbers that these intuitive names represent, 11, 12, 13, 14. But in the code, we'll see them as jack, queen, king, ace. How do we access the data in an enumeration? Just like we would in any other class, but notice here we're not instantiating card rank. We're simply referring to that enumeration. So in this dictionary of ranks, the string 2 gives us a card rank of 2. King gives us a card rank of king, which in this case is 
more or less an alias for the number 13. Okay. Then we come down to our class card. It represents a single card in a deck. It takes a suit and a value. We'll set self.suit to suit, self.value to value. So this would be, say, club and ace. And then the rank will retrieve the rank stored at ranks of value. So in this case, it would be the object, or it would be the value card rank dot ace, which again comes from this enumeration card rank. You'll notice that we've also got a string method inside the card. This special method name underscore underscore str underscore underscore is something that is given a default value. This method is given a default implementation by Python, but generally what it returns is not intuitive. And so what we're doing here is overriding the method. We are overriding the string method inside the class card to return something that is much more intuitive to us. Otherwise, we'd see a string returned by the Python implementation, default implementation. That makes no sense. And that's it. That's our entire card class. OK. Then we come to a shuffle deck. It holds 52 unique cards. We set deck as an empty list and then we iterate over each suit and each value to append a card of that suit and value to the deck. And then we use the method shuffle from the random module, which we, imp uh, which we imported above, to shuffle that deck. The last thing we have is a draw method that says return self.deck.pop so we're simply popping the top card off of the deck and returning it. Okay, so these are our classes, card and shuffle deck. Now, why don't we play some cards and we'll see if we'd like to make some changes to these classes along the way. So the first thing I can do in the Python interpreter is import the module my deck and I just simply say from my deck my deck is right here inside the directory in which I'm running Python so Python has no trouble finding my deck or anything I import from it like shuffled deck and then I can instantiate a new deck and then draw a card from the deck. Because I implemented the card class with a string method, that is we overrode the method underscore underscore str underscore underscore. When I try to print a card, I will get that string representation that I told the string method to return. In this case, the value of the card as well as the suit of the card. So I know that card 1 is 6 of spades. Let's draw another card.
Oops. Okay. King of clubs. So let's say that I were playing a very simple card game in which player one draws one card, player two draws one card, and the winner of the game is the one with the highest card, the highest value card. So how could I do that? How could I test to see which of these two cards is higher? We know that king is higher, but how do we know that based on the way the class has been implemented? Remember that a card has a value, a suit, and also a rank based on that value. So we can compare the ranks of the cards. Okay, the rank of card 1 is less than the rank of card 2. Remember our card ranks were in that enumeration, in that int enumeration class. So ultimately we are comparing the values stored at king and 6, which are 6 and I think 13. King is definitely higher than 6. Now you notice I had to go back in and type card1.rank to make sure that we are comparing the same things. Intuitively, if we want to compare cards, we're always going to want to compare by rank in most games. So intuitively, I should be able to figure out whether card 1 is less than card 2. But right now I can't. I can't because there is no way to say that a card object is less than or greater than a card object. But we can change this. In the same way that we overrode the string method, we can also override other methods inside of a class. So if we want to be able to compare two cards, we can make that happen. We override the less than and the greater than methods. And these are not the only ones you could override. We want to return whether self.rank is less than other.rank. And I forgot to specify other in the definition here. But what we're doing here is overriding the less than and greater than operators such that they will work for card objects.